All right, so let me share my screen again. No, stop again. All right, so this is the the news and events section of our, our meetup. So uh, a couple things that we wanted to share with with people. Um, from an event standpoint, there's probably two big ones um, coming up. One starts tonight, as a matter of fact, Word Sesh. Uh, this is one that Peter uh, let me know about. So Peter, I don't know if you've attended this in the past before, if you have any um, any insight into this. Uh, I, I did, obviously, I registered. I, I brought up, again, if you go to wordsesh.com, it's free. You can still register now. Um, your sessions seem really great. I mean, quite a, a variety of topics and speakers. and starts at 10 Eastern time. So if, if you're really into it after this one ends, you can just, you know, have some dinner and then go, go for, for another couple hours of, of WordPress. Peter, did you attend this one last year? Peter might be on mute. All right, I'll ask him again if he, when he joins us back. So that's, that's one that's coming up. That in fact started today. Uh, the other big one is WordCamp Europe. So this is, I believe, yeah, it's virtual again. Um, these are great ones. Obviously, there, there's always a lot of talk specific to WordPress itself. So if you want to see the future of WordPress, and, and right now in particular, there's a full site editing is kind of a, the hot topic around WordPress. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion around full site editing at this this um, WordCamp. And you know, again, the, if you're going to look at the the bright side of of what's going on in the world these days, this is your opportunity to really attend all you know all these kind of word camps you normally wouldn't be able to. So yeah, it's free. So feel free to sign up. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the the speakers or sessions have been quite announced yet, but if you if you sign up, you can search for you know word camp you know, Europe word camp .org 2021. Um, as soon as they do have the sessions solidified, they'll start emailing those to you. So. Well worth it, and even just to get the any materials that they they may hand out. So if you can't attend everything live, you can always get the, the materials as well. Yeah, no, Ray, I agree. And um, yeah, I was gushing over word sesh with my microphone muted, so <laughs> that's that's why. I did. But yeah, no, it's it, it's a great program. Um, it, it goes global, um, which is why it starts at ten o'clock tonight. It's going to go into the morning. It starts again in the morning because it's the different you know, hemispheres, um, uh, but it's, there's, and like, like all of the WordPress um, word camps that are online and all, the great thing is you can pick and choose as you wish. Um, and, and in a lot of most cases, um, everything's getting recorded too. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily go to that one session at three in the morning, but what's nice is when you do, if you want to participate, there's a lot, there's usually, you know, an opportunity to be interactive, which is some of the ones that I pick up to do, but yeah, it's great. Uh, so now, tool plugin and spotlight. Peter, this is yours. Why don't I stop sharing? Yep. Let me share uh, this over. And let me share this. You see a WordPress uh, window? Yep. Okay, great. So what I want to uh, share today is actually kind of um, a category of tools um, that I think are especially appropriate for some of the things we're going to talk about tonight, which are, we've talked about them in the past, but these Chrome extensions, if you use a Chrome browser, whether it's Chrome or, or any of the um, Chromium-based um, web browsers, there are extensions that you can add to your browser that give you a lot of capabilities um, and I'll show you, I'm gonna briefly show four because they're related. Um, one of them is the color picker uh, and I'll, I'll show you where it is, but this gives you the opportunity if you like a color and you you pick your, if you see my mouse, you can see my mouse here, um, Ray. Yep. If I pick Colorzilla uh, and, and activate that, I can go to an area, pick a color, it copies to this and gives me what the what the code is for that. Um, if I wanna use that color for something. Um, what font is another one where when I activate the what font extension and I click on a font that I want, it's gonna tell me, oh, this is open sans, uh, weight is 300 and it gives me some some details. So these are some, some nice um, browser extensions and where you get extensions when you go to the Chrome web store um, and you can look up, like I was just showing you what font 
Colorzilla was the other one. You could see that they I have a removed from Chrome because they're added into my into Chrome. But I'll show you two more. Um, and one is actually a premium one that I that I purchased. I'll I'll exit what font. Um, one of them is great. It's called um, CSS Peeper, and that's under here CSS Peeper. Um, and this is a great um, it's a great extension. Again, you go to the to the uh, Chrome Web Store and you can install this right in your Chrome browser. And what it does is it allows you to say, you know, click on an element, see this red box or the red dotted line box is now that the extension is is active and it's showing me when I link on that or click on that, it's saying, okay, that box is 639 pixels wide. I'm sure this is very small for you to see by 121. What's the typeface? What's the font size? What are the colors used in that box? So it's a great way of really kind of getting an idea of the the that we talk about CSS, the 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 cascading style sheet that defines the color. I mean, it defines what you're seeing. And this extension gives you a great insight into specific things. If you see something, you go, wow, I really like the way that looks. What is it? Oh, they're using the Open Sans font, but the weight is, you know, um, I don't see the weight on here. The other one shows up. I'm sure it's here somewhere. But um, that, that that's a great tool. And then taking that one step further in this premium tool is something called Hoverify. And I just happened to see it, the one of the, one of the people that um, that I uh, follow was doing a demonstration and he opened up this little Hoverify extension. Mm -hmm. Now this is a paid extension, um, but it, again, it, it, it goes to a level of really showing you everything that is going on, on on a website. And this is, again, you can look at any website that you want and then you can get into, you know, just kind of keep looking at, oh, what are the colors that they use? I know I'm opening up a, a number of windows here, um, but, one thing that then where it gets kind of neat under under Hoverify is you can also look at things like, um, you know, what does this site look like on various devices? Now there's different ways of doing it, but all in this one tool, you kind of get this really neat way of looking at a website. And th now this is great for developers to see their own website, and you can even scroll through it and all. Great, great little, uh, great plugin. I um, I keep calling it a plugin, but a great extension, um, Hoverify. I, I like it a lot because it kind of gives me some some insights. If you wanted to look at like all the assets that are on a website, it literally is giving you, okay, here are all the images, um, if there's any uh, SVGs or videos and all. So uh, these Chrome extensions are a great way of using the tool that you have in front of you to kind of, you know, analyze, um, especially again, it's apropos to the topic of tonight when you go look for inspiration. If you want to say, well, how did they do that? What are they using? What's the color? So on and so forth. These extensions are great. You know, Peter, for that one, um, I'm sorry, that one you said was a paid one, right? The hover yep. pie? Yep. Do you know what the price is on that one? I'm curious. It's it's twenty five dollars lifetime. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 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 not ex it's not expensive at all. I think it's a, yeah, the URL for that is tryhoverify.com, the all in one browser control web development here. Yeah. Um, hmm. By now it we is. A, yeah, we can send a link to these afterwards. Yeah. Oh, thirty dollars. Sorry, maybe oh. they won. <laughs> <laughs> so, or, or wait till Black yeah. Friday and it'll be 15 probably, but yeah. Yeah, but it's great, but it's it's a one-time purchase, which is always nice. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we'll send out these links. All right. You want to take the screen back? Yes, please. Very good. Let me... Actually, do you have it or do I need to give it to you? Uh, you've got to stop your share. There. Oh. oh, it went on my third screen. Sorry. <laughs> Show off my fancy screen. Command center that you're in. I know. Well, it's the, it's the, um, I thought it was there. Meeting controls. Where is it? Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think I can still take it. It was on the other third screen. <laughs> I've got the power. You got it now. I got the power. I got to remember to look at all the screens. Great. All right, awesome. So here's the meat, the meat of our presentation. Sorry, I'm gonna move. The reason I, I, I know people were asking about me um, making this full screen, sorry, I have to move these stupid little, the Zoom tools, that's that's what bothers me. Oh, there we go, that's a good place to put it. The Zoom tools are in my way. 
All right, so our topic is let's build a site together. And I was trying to think of Rolling Stones. This song is going through my mind through this one. Not exactly related, but anyway. Um, yeah, so this this one, it, it, I'll get into this in a second. This is a topic that Peter and I have definitely been bouncing around for quite a while. And, and it's kind of difficult um, to do this virtually. I mean, ideally, you know, when we're, when we're showing somebody how to build the site, you want to all be together so we can look over each other's shoulders and all that. But we'll, we'll do our, our best to hopefully um, accomplish what we, what we wanted to accomplish. So let's, um, oops, sorry, one second. Uh, so here's, <clears throat> sorry, here's our, our agenda for, <clears throat> for this topic. So we'll, we'll do some quick introductions of uh, Peter and myself. Then we're gonna get into the, you know, what are we building? So give everyone a little bit of a background um, Peter's going to talk then about just getting started. So before you put your hands to your keyboard, what are some design considerations that you should have? Uh, then we'll, we'll take a little Q&A break for that. That's part one, is really setting the context. So before you start building, it's always good to, to have a plan. And that's what part one is. In part two, we'll really get into some hands-on, um, you know, hands to keyboard stuff. So I'll show you how to set up a local WordPress environment. Um, we, we've done this in the past before when, we're, when we were actually physically together for one of our meetups, but I think it's, it's good to review that again. Um, and then, then Peter is going to talk about installing and configuring a theme, so picking a theme and, and building it. So that's, that's the setup work for part two. So at the, at the end of this part, like I said, we're going to then talk about what's coming next, what's coming up in, in part two. So real quick introductions. Um, again, my name's Ray. Uh, I live in Connecticut. I've been in IT as a developer slash software architect for over 25 years. I worked for some large corporations. I've been using WordPress for over four years, maybe five now. Um, currently self-employed as a, a website developer. Uh, as I said, I live in Newington, Connecticut. I'm married, no kids. We have one crazy old cat and I am a geek. Peter. Yeah, I'm uh, Peter Ingersoll. I live in South Windsor, Connecticut. Um, I'm a marketing and communications person by, you know, early career, uh, moved into to web development um, early on, um, discovered WordPress now probably eight, 10 years ago. Um, and uh, it's been, it has become my, my tool of choice. Um, you know, I'm using technology for communicate, marketing communications. Um, I'm self-taught in a whole lot of things. Uh, I'm married with two adult children, and you know I spend way, way, way too much time on WordPress meetups and podcasts and on and on because I really, really like it. And that's how I contribute back to the group. You're doing it all for us. Oh, yeah. All for you, absolutely. <laughs> time will. Thank you. All right, so let's let's start setting the stage a little bit about you know, what are we talking about here? What do, what do we hope to accomplish? And, and I know some of this we, we mentioned in the meetup introduction, so I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. Um, so our goal over the course of, of these several meetups, and we're not sure exactly how many yet, but over the course of several is we're going to build together from scratch a moderately complex website. Um, so moderately complex means, you know, we don't want to just do one page, a landing page, you know, hello world, and then say, okay, that, that showed it to you. We, we want to actually demonstrate some, some features in WordPress. We want to solve some problems and show things I think that most people um, who work with, uh, again, work in a typical industries um, will face. So one of our keys is also <clears throat> no page builders. And, and this is coming from a guy who uses Divi extensively, but this, we want to show, you know, what the future of WordPress is through the block editor in Gutenberg. So we want to use the block editor as much as possible. Um, again, we're not anti-page builder. I, I use it quite frequently, but I'm excited, at, even as a page builder um, aficionado, of what, what's really coming in Gutenberg or what's there now and what's continuing to get built out. So. We thought this would be a great um, exercise to showcase the, the power of, of what's there in the, in the current editor. And the thing about doing that too is the current editor, because it's built into Gutenberg, anyone who's following along with us, you don't need to buy another page builder. You don't need to get Elementor or subscriptions and all that. You can just use WordPress out of the box. Um, so along with that too, we wanna to make sure that we're using plugins only when needed. You know, sometimes if you follow uh, other examples on the web or if you downloaded, let's say a sample sites from somewhere, 
you know, they'll put 50 plugins or five plugins or whatever on there. And you're like, well, why did they do them? So what we want to do is we want to first show you the problem and then, you know, talk about solutions. And if, if the plugin is a solution to the problem, we want to tell you why. So we're going to, you know, deliberately hit some walls here and say, oh, okay, boy, here's a couple ways to do it. And you know what? There's probably a plugin for that. So our criteria as well for, for choosing plugins are free. You know, we want to choose free, secure, well-tested plugins. We're not going to, you know, grab some, some sketchy plugins from some repositories we're not familiar with. So free and safe. Uh, and also we, we prefer lightweight, single focused plugins as opposed to Swiss army knives, you know, jetpack, you know, thing, things that do too much. So if we're looking for one, you know, a plugin to do one problem, ideally we may pick we may pick a plugin that some people may say, hey, wait a minute, why don't you pick this one? Well, because the other one maybe does five other things that we, we really don't need, like Yoast or things like that. So anyway, but that's the beginning of our criteria. So, you know, we, we're not going to do this all tonight. We're obviously not going to do it all in one session, but our intent is we're going to, through multiple meetups, we hope you'll hang around with us. We're going to build on the prior ones. So today is really, today's the laying the foundation. It's, it's that, again, the picture, here's the blueprint and all that. So it's it's starting off the um, starting off the, the the building that everything else will then obviously um, you know build on top of. So our intent, our intent though, bless you, our intent is to show the the cradle to grave um, beginning to end life cycle of a website, and that includes the launching part of it. So at the end of this, you know, we're talking about local today, but in the end of this, we are going to go into the steps of launching a site to a host show all the different steps that are involved in that. Cause that's something a lot of times people gloss over, I think in, in, um, in some tutorials. Uh, we also wanna share best practices versus quick and dirty solutions. Um, again, best practice is the loaded term coming from software development. Everyone thinks their practice is the best practice, but we, we want to at least explain and give our rationale for why we picked either a particular solution and some of it just comes from our experience and pain points that we've run into. So some things you may scratch your head and say, why don't you just do it this way? It's a lot simpler. And, and we'll explain, we'll try to explain why we're doing something maybe that seems a little bit more complex, but it's, you know, there's a purpose behind it. Um, so again, ideally we'd, be, we'd all be in a, a room together. We'd all be, you know, typing on keyboards in front of each other. We could go around and, and we'd all be typing at the same time, but obviously we can't do that for, for virtual. But we do hope that you will all take this as an opportunity to be hands-on. So if, if you want to do it tonight while we're doing it, feel free. If not, what we highly suggest is that after tonight, um, go back to the recording and the parts where we're showing you things step by step, follow along. Because ideally, what we'd love to see is when you come to the next you know, part two, you've already built the foundation. You follow the steps that we've done. So you're ready. And I think you'll have better interaction. You'll have better questions to ask. And, and you'll run into things, I think, that you know, instead of just watching us, you know, learning by doing, I, I think, is such a great thing. So that's a big picture. That's, that's our goals, I think, of, of what we're trying to get. Peter, I don't know if there's another big goal or anything that. No, I, I agree. Um, I know for me, one of the things that, um, that I, I want to be um, kind of aware of are all so many cases people are going to tutorials online and they're seeing things that are just not applicable to what they're doing to their they're old or they're they're done in such a way that it says this is how you do it in such a set way and while necessarily we have to pick make choices as we go along I think we're going to you know we're going to encourage you to, to know that you know there isn't an absolute one way of doing things. And the more you can build on a foundation of how things work, uh, I think the more prepared you are for when you need to, you know, make the variation for what you want to do in your site, you're going to understand, you know, where things are, you know, how things are put together. So that that's important to me. And, and I, I know to us. So. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> thank you. Second. So with any website, now, now we're getting into the designing and what are we building. So with any website, again, this, this seems rather obvious, but it's good to start with, uh, you know, stepping back a little bit and saying, wh what's the goal of your website? You know, in, in all the meetups that we've done over the past couple of years, 
we've had a lot of different people using WordPress here. I mean, that's that's kind of the beauty of WordPress. You can use it for blogs, business, nonprofits, you know, what, whatever. But with any of those, when you're building your website, you need to think about, you know, what is your specific goal? What are the goals of your site? So again, if you're a blog, a blogger, maybe your goal is just personal expression. You know, you're just using that and you don't care if anyone reads it in the world. You know, that's fine. Um, some people want to grow their audience though. You know, instead of writing it privately in a diary, you're putting it on the internet because you want more people to reach out to and communicate with. So that could be one of your goals or monetization as a blog. You know, that's, that's some people's goals. If you're a business website, maybe you want to capture leads, you want to sell products online, you want to build brand awareness, et cetera. You know, that's, that's your goals. Um, nonprofits, you want to educate people on your cause, you want to maybe solicit donors, recruit volunteers, you know, et cetera. So be real clear about what kind of site am I building and what are my goals? So in, in goals too, another thing is think about your goals, but then also the goals of your visitors. You know, if, if everyone's goals were just monetization, then all we would see were ads everywhere. I mean, sometimes it feels like that, but then nobody would come to your site. You know, that's that's the Facebook thing of the carrot and the stick. You know, the, the carrot is, oh, I get to see pictures of all my friends. And then the stick is, oh, here's an ad in your face. Um, but you need both. So think about that as well. You may, you know, don't put always your goals front and center. You've got to think about your visitors' goals too. And, and for some big software development projects, this, this would be an entire phase. This would be your discovery phase of a project. We, we're not, we don't have the time to do that, nor do we for most small sites. But you know, this is where you get like user experience experts coming in, talking about the different roles and people who use your site. Again, we, we're not going to go that crazy. But the reason to think about this stuff, too, is that later down the line, we'll see this might be bonus material when we pull in Bill or other people, too, is how are you going to measure that? So once we launch our site or as we're building our site, it's good to think about those things. So, you know, we, again, think about that in the beginning and write it down. That's another thing, too. I think it's always good to go, go back to these. So, again, the other thing before you start, <laughs> you know, any artist will tell you looking at a blank page is intimidating. You don't want to just, you know, stare at the blank page forever and say, what's this thing going to look like? Um, and the good news is there are a lot of people out there who are probably in the same domain as you, whether you're a business, a nonprofit, or whatever. So don't, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Find inspiration by looking at other websites that are related to your domain. And again, we're saying inspiration, not don't go there and copy. You know? <laughs> don't just copy, you know, pictures and all that kind of stuff. That, that's no, that's not good. Um, and sometimes finding inspiration, be careful of who you're inspired by. That, that's maybe a good way to put it. Because um, I have to talk to like local businesses where like, oh, I want my site to look like Joe Schmo's site because they're so successful. And I look at Joe Schmo's site and like, this is an awful looking site. It's like, they're not successful because their site, they're successful because, you know, many other things you don't see. So a lot of times I, I tend to look at like national brands within the domain because national brands, they have a, a huge, you know, team of people and marketing and all that building their sites. So they're good to kind of get inspired. Um, but again, be inspired, but be realistic. You know, they have a full team of people. So don't think that, you know, if you're a beginner with your skills and resources, don't think you're going to be able to create a site that's, you know, is wow and is spectacular with some of these national, national brands. Um, and again, flashy, this is the thing too, that trends come and go, but, you know, it's flashy, and I don't mean flash, I mean, just flashy uh, kind of designs. They, those may not be the best designs, you know, those, those are not good converting websites a lot of times. In fact, some of the ones that are the, the simplest, but are effective and are clean, those are some of the most effective um, websites. So again, going back to your goals, that's something you measure. So don't, don't think you, your site needs to look completely, you know, hip and artistic and all this stuff. Maybe, you know, a simpler site it, it can work quite well. So when we're talking about our project here, um, we'll send out these links, not even obviously the, um, the slides afterwards, but just some places to look, and these aren't the only ones, but there's, there are sites out there specifically for website designs. So Dribbble is, is quite a popular one. Um, site Inspire is, is another one. Uh, I actually like to look at, again, this is blasphemy as a WordPress uh, user, but I like to look at the, the competition. So there's a reason that these other guys are popular. Squarespace is quite popular these days. Now Weebly, Wix, um, Duda is another one. So the good thing is you don't have to build in their technologies, but you can look at their templates. So a lot of them have good examples. You know, Squarespace has a lot of examples of you want to be a restaurant, here's, here's some things. And they have, you know, they have a marketing design art team that builds these things. So again, good, good ideas for inspiration. 
So our project, again, the thing we're gonna be building here over the course of the next couple sessions, we wanted to be specific. And, and Peter and I talked about this too, of you know, a good one, because we like to do good is, when both of us work uh, with nonprofits. So what we thought we'd build is a fictional uh, nonprofit website. So it's an animal rescue because everyone loves animals. <laughs> and, and, and again, don't worry that, you know, even though we're building an animal rescue, don't drop off and say, I'm never gonna need that. The things that we're gonna do in this project really can be applied to any type of website. We just, we think that being more focused, more specific will, will help us as we're building out the site. So again, what's an animal rescue? Like what, what are some of their goals specifically? You know, it's education, right? They wanna educate people about, you know, the cause of, of animal rescue, probably donations, you know, so they wanna solicit um, donations toward, towards the rescue, facilitating pet adoptions. So maybe when we get to that, maybe that's a contact form or something, um, recruiting volunteers, et cetera. So all these things, these goals, we're not gonna build this all immediately from phase one, but you wanna keep this in mind. And as we're iterating, as Peter was saying, we're iterating through this project, you're gonna see these different pieces getting built out um, through our project. So as I said, you know, even though we're talking about something very specific, this hopefully everything we're talking about here can apply to any type of website. And here's our inspiration. Again, we're, we're lazy or I'm lazy. So, you know, the, and here's the thing too, I think a lot of times, is, especially beginners get a little too hung up on finding sites that look exactly like what they want. I mean, that's where Theme Forest has made millions <laughs> over the years because somebody says, I want a cupcake site. You know, I want a site for selling cupcakes. And then you find the cupcake theme and people would download that. It's like, you don't need that. You just need to find something that's broadly, um, you know, generalized that fits your, your domain. So in this case, I'm gonna break out of the slides for a second. Uh, we're gonna to go to, and I'll show it here in a second. We're gonna to go to, to Duda. So Duda is, for people who aren't familiar with this, this is another website building um, uh, service, like you know, software as a service, kind of like Squarespace or Wix, et cetera. And they have a lot of different templates. So they happen to have a couple templates for nonprofits. And the one specifically we're gonna look at is, that was my timer, 15 minutes. We're going to look at this one. So again, we're, we're building an animal rescue. We have nothing to do with uh, this particular cause, but we're going to try to build our site, at least some visual elements of it to match this site. So again, without starting with a blank canvas, we're going to look at building out a home page with like this kind of a section with this button called action button, you know, side by side, et cetera, et cetera. So not exactly, but we wanted something to start with. So this and I'll send this link out to everyone so you can look at this afterwards too. And if you're playing along, you know, this is this is kind of our end goal, at least, at least for you know the home page. If we get to other pages, we, we may pick other other examples. So with that, that was my section. Peter, design considerations. Yep. Let me yep, design that. And I'll take over. Yep. Do you want me to uh, do the screens or do you wanna you wanna share? You know, um, yeah, let me let me do it because I might bring in I might decide to bring in a, a screen to to show. Um, of course, now that there we go. I'm like, where did that go? There we go. And I'm doing this one. And you see my presentation? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, I should have made the ribbon go away too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, design consider. What's that? Can you do a full screen? I know I had other people asking me to do that as well. If you don't mind. I can, yeah. Uh, I just have to remember to escape out of it when, um, when, yeah, where is it? Sure. There it is. Um, if I show anything. Okay. Look good? Yep. Okay, great. So I'm, I'm going to uh, piggyback a lot on what, um, Ray talked about because it all ties together. And one of the things that you know we we often talk about is, you know, there, there's there's overlap and there's triangulation, and it isn't necessarily an absolute linear process. And there's things to think about uh, throughout, you know, this whole design and development process that we're talking about. So the topics I'm going to cover are best practices and principles. Um, you know highly uh, a high level overview content navigation typography colors images and you know more again design and functional inspiration uh, just another kind of view of that um so best practices and principles of website design one, one thing that's very important um i want to talk to everybody is you know we're not carving granite people have heard that from me before 
Uh, website design is iterative um, and there's always an opportunity to apply continuous improvement. And the takeaway to that for me is that don't be afraid to experiment, give it a try, you know, build upon it. Don't look for perfection because that's the perfection is really kind of the one of the biggest enemies to never launch a site. Um, embrace simplicity. Uh, don't over design. Ray already touched on that. Um, you know, there are tools out there that let you do all kinds of crazy things. And just because you can does not mean you should, especially, and we'll touch on this a few times, the way websites work now and the way you get ranked in Google and how people are using your site on a, on a phone and not necessarily a big screen, um, you know, uh, PC and, and, and on. So, you know, simplicity is, 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 is your friend. Um, you know, you're gonna focus on the content and not over designing uh, something. Again, focus on the goals of the site. It, it is so important, and, and and why we'll keep coming back to that is because we often see um, folks not doing that, and they make all kinds of stuff. And then you look at it, and you go, okay, but what do you want us to actually do? What are you trying to get? So you really do, you know, want to kind of keep coming back to that and look at your site from a critical eye, and even have other people. Will, you know, months from now, we'll be testing and things like that, and have you know. Um, uh, people really experience this site, but meeting visitor expe expectations is a good thing. And what I mean by this is I, I've, I've worked with folks and they're like, oh, but this is so like every other site. And it's like, but there's a reason for that because there's an expectation that you're going to have certain things in certain places that people are gonna feel comfortable with and get to what you want them to do as opposed to try to you know, navigate and work through an overly complex site because you think it, it it's different, you know, so allow yourself to, you know, to really embrace what are you trying to do and, and a, a simple approach to it. Again, that, that mobile first speed and core web vitals, core web vitals is something you'll be hearing more about when it talks about, when we talk about um, the Google rankings and things like that, but all, all has to do with having a very efficient site more than an over-designed site. Um, and tied to that, and, we'll do this in another presentation, but you know, accessibility is important, but what's nice about an attention to accessibility, which is making your site usable for people with all levels of ability, including disabled, blind, deaf, uh, mobily disabled, cognitively disabled, um, you know, all of those, when you're looking at those, if you're looking at issues of accessibility, you're developing a better overall uh, user experience for everybody. Um, so again, it's all in doing things in a, in a, in a nice, clear way. Um, now, when we get into, as you're looking at, at uh, some of the design elements, um, you know, consider your brand voice and audience. Again, very important. If you have an established brand, then reinforce it. If you're developing your brand, then think about how your website is going to do that. So as you pick you know how you speak to your to your audience. You know what is your your personality, your, your tone, your voice. Um, are you very business like? Are you friendly? Are you you know and and you know all of that ties into what's your, does it match the impression of the appearance? Does your site you know if we're looking at an animal rescue site, you know that we're going to be looking at things like you know falling in love with with you know, dogs and cats that need homes and the language and the tone is gonna to be very supportive of that. Your target audience is going to be expecting that and, and, and it's going to respond to, you know, that kind of messaging. So think about what the target audience is expecting in terms of, you know, the tone and the personality, the look, the feel of the, of the whole site. Um, but also as you're establishing, you know, your, your brand, you, you should also consider, uh, you know, how and where else your brand will be used. So if in fact, you're going to take something to another step and you're looking at logos and colors and things like that, you know, you may be starting with your website or you may already start with the brand, but, you know, think about how these, how, what you're doing is going to work for you in the long run. doesn't mean you have to over-engineer it, but it does mean if you, the more you think about it in advance, the better you are going forward. Um, but one of the main things is to me is, you know, be consistent, right? So you 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 want to have a consistent tone. You if if you're giving a certain impression that it remains consistent, so you don't have things clashing. Um, and that could go, you know, color, language, and all. But you know, issues of of, of sites that just feel like there's there, there's they're incongruous, um, that, that there's not consistency there, is something to really pay attention to. Um, but of course you know, a website, 
everything is based on your content. And while we're going to talk a lot about the design elements and all, but it really should be based on, you know, what are you trying to do? And then what are the words that you're going to say? Um, that the words are what define your website. It's what Google is reading when Google, when if you want to get ranked for something, for example. So you really you need to think about your content up front. And 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 my favorite way of looking at it is grade school essay writing that works for the web organizing in terms of topics and headings and subheadings and bullet points and something that really you know you can develop what are the things that we want to say and write it in a kind of in a, in a kind of format that um is really organized and you could build on it. it doesn't have to be out of the gate absolutely perfect but once you start building your outline and fleshing it out, then you'll see, oh, here's where I can add and all. And that's going to help you going forward with all other aspects of your site, you know, your navigation and your, your organization, how many pages do I need, things like that. Um, so fleshing out that content based on the outline is really going to is really going to help you. And again, iterate as you go when you as you as you keep moving uh, through the development process, you'll keep you know, revisiting your content and saying, does it work? And, and what can I, what can I uh, modify for it? So looking at that content, now you get into things like site navigation. Now we're kind of jumping into a technical part of the website development, the site navigation, but it ties into what I was just saying in terms of outlining your content. Um, and then what's important when you're looking at it from the perspective of the site itself, consider the content areas your audience will expect um, or that support your goals. And what I mean by that is there are certain things, that, you know, if you have a, uh, uh, a nonprofit organization that is an animal rescue, there's certain things that you want your audience to do and that they're going to expect, you know, I want to know about the organization. How do I adopt? You might want them to say, you know, we have a donation page, um, whether it's donating money or donating, you know, materials. Um, you know, it might not necessarily be a subscribe type of organization, but it, you may, you know, have photo galleries, um, or you you build out a blog that talks about, uh, you know, um, the pet placement and and how successful that is. And so, when you look at all of these kind of topics for different types of websites and businesses and things like that, you know, if you're running just a blog, you wouldn't do a lot of these things. But maybe you have a blog. That eventually you're going to add a shop to because there's some tie-in with product to what you've been writing about. Um, so these kind of top-level things are expected of certain sites. So consider them in, in as you outline and start fleshing out the navigation of your website. Um, at the same time, avoid over-engineering your navigation. I don't know anybody who says, you know what I love about that website? Their navigation goes four levels deep. There's a mega menu with all these things and I get to go so far into the content. A lot of people don't like that. You know, help me organize, get into, if, if I'm looking at resources, now you can break into it. But if you're giving me a level of navigation that is, you know, so huge, think about how you can simplify and not over-engineer. And, and quite honestly, it makes it easier on you, especially getting out of the gate on how big your website needs to be. You know, you can expand that as appropriate. And it might not necessarily be a navigation level, it might be a page linking to more content. But um, give yourself a break and don't over uh, navigate, uh, over engineer your navigation. Now, typography, now we're getting into some of the details of, of when you're looking at a site. Um, again, same topic of looking for inspiration. Uh, find find sites that that look good to you um, that you like the fonts it's pleasing to your eye um, but what's important is to minimize the total number of fonts on on your site and now we're getting the level little uh, bit of technical but um, it's really easy to you know start building a site and having all kinds of fonts for every thing all these different well they all get, have to be downloaded they all have to be managed in the browser level and so and Ultimately, it's not good design. Um, you, you, you're again over designing a site unnecessarily that adds an overhead to your site that you don't need. Um, you may work with just one font style that really works for your brand. Works. It's you like the way it's readable, it's legible, but it's also kind of appropriate to what you know what your personality is. Um, 
and you could use different weights, for example, for and sizes for headings and subheadings and so. Or you may get look for just a matched pair. You know, maybe you have a font that's used primarily for headings and a different font that's used for body content and things like that. And and there, I, well, I can show you some uh, ways of looking at um, at it. And I think Ray, what we'll do is at the break with questions, go in to show a few of those things instead of me going over and up to like Google Fonts right now. Um, so. You know, using Google Fonts is one of the easiest ways to find and explore the free fonts that you can easily put on your website through most modern themes. There are a lot of ways of getting fonts on your site. And in fact, um, getting fonts uh, either loaded from your site or even going back to the simplicity of just using system fonts. In other words, letting the person's uh, device, their their PC, their phone, whatever, man, you know, uh, uh, pick the font for you. So you're dealing with a sans serif. Um, you know, this the straight like you're looking at here. This is an F font. It's a system font. Um, Times Roman is a system font. That's a that's a serif font. You know, old fashioned kind of book style. Um, but you know, there's benefits of looking at the different types of font styles. So just know that there's a reason to be um, reserved in how you manage fonts, both from a technical uh, perspective and also from a uh, an aesthetic, you know, over over designing something um, might not work for you. Then you get into, you know, when you're looking at a site, you're looking at the colors. Again, look for inspiration. Same concept of, you know, when you see things you go, you know, that is pleasing to the eye and it seems to fit what I want to do. Um, consider the feeling of colors, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of corporate sites that are, you know, blues and grays and all of their least offensive to the most number of people, they're calming, those types of things. Uh, greens might be nature, Reds and yellows called to attention, but of course, all variations and, and combinations of these colors, you know, and picking an aesthetic that really works for you, um, you know, you can have uh, some fun here, but at the same time, you know, be careful of things that clash. And that's why, you know, you paying attention to colors that complement your brand, your tone, but also, you know, are complementary colors to each other. Um, and there's there's a science behind that. And that's why there are tools like these these color wheels and and, um, and we've listed a few here um, that help you kind of generate palettes on the fly. I think we'll I think we'll do that too on on when after these slides where we can show some of these things. But it gives you an opportunity to try some colors, you know, capture what is the code of the colors because now I want to use that on my on my website. So um, colors is a place where that where you can um, really be uh, expressive. Um, but also be careful too, because you know one of the other things here I've, I've got, um, you know, don't rely on color for message. So as you're looking at color, um, remember, you know, there are people who can't see color the same way that other people see color. So um, understand how the color is being used. There's tools that we can go in, and you can look at what does my site look like if I have this kind of color blindness or that kind of color blindness, um, and and using those gets. Uh, definitely a different a different perspective um, on your website. So um, now images. First thing is you know think about photography versus illustrations, and a lot of times you kind of want to again in the category of consistency, think about how you're using them together. Like say you had a list of things you wouldn't necessarily want to have an icon, an illustration, and a photo as different headings for the same kind of level thing. You know you might have just icons, you know that type of thing. So doesn't mean you can't use icons with photography, but just you know looking at how they're used. And if you're unsure, again, as you're looking at other websites, you can see where, you know, you know what looks good. We don't always know exactly how to get to the final design, but we very often can look at a site and go, that looks good. And, and again, that becomes the, the, the inspiration that you have. Um, images should complement and reinforce your brand and message. Same kind of thing. You know, if you have, if you are a, uh, a gardening blog, like like somebody we have on, on in this group, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of gardening photos and you're going to have a lot of greens and plants and things like that. So, you know, some things seem obvious, but other things maybe, maybe less. We're going to do the animal rescue, having uh, uh, photos of, of, of the actual animals, um, uh, owners, um, you know, embracing their, their, their new family member and all is, is a great way to go. One of the things that really works, um, it's, it's not always easy to do, but having genuine personal photography can really work in your favor for a lot of the sites for the people who might be on this call. Um, connections can be made through photography. 
stock photography often, you know, it, some of the worst offenses I've seen is somebody has an about me and they're using a stock photography on the site. And it's a stock photography that I know it, you, you can look at it and go, that's not that person. That undermines any kind of genuine, you know, connection you have with the audience. In this image, the dog on the right is my dog, or was my dog, he's gone now. But, you know, this is a connection to, to me. So photography makes a big difference there. Um, consider image size and format for site speed. Again, very important as you're looking at how all of these things work together and, and keeping the site efficient um, means that you've got to make sure that you're not totally overdoing images to the point where, you know, we, we literally see gigabytes of, of, of photos on a website for a single page that makes the page go quite slow. Um, and there are ways to manage that, whether it's reducing or using lazy loading and things that we'll get into when we get into some of those types of things. Um, image sources we've listed here are some of the free places where you can get some high quality uh, images that you can use for free on Splash, Pexels, Pixabay. Uh, the Adobe, uh, the stock uh, Adobe section does have a free section. Uh, Canva is a tool that you can use and get paid level, but these are places where um, I've been finding some really good quality photos. Um, so design and functional inspiration. The topic that we have, I've act, I recently saw a, um, a presentation by uh, Laura Elizabeth. She, um, she does some great work teaching developers and coders how to think about design, You're kind of right in the wheelhouse what we're what we're looking at. And one of the things that really kind of resonated with me is this idea that, you know, when you're looking for that inspiration, the find sites that look good to you, then you find sites that work well for you and those elements that work, but it doesn't mean that you're, you're looking at the element and then you're looking at the style from one site, elements from another that work, and then your content, and then it's how you bring them together. So you may say, I really like the way they use testimonials on this site, but it's not the style I want to use. I like this kind of style with my tweaks. And then of course, I'm going to put my content in. So it's a great way of pulling things together and then through tweaking and the iterating and the improving, that's where you can really, you know, honing in on going from that, the fear of the blank page to I've pulled these elements together and now I'm melding them into something that really works for me consistently has this, as the functionality that I want attached to the style I want with the content that I want. And I think that's it, right? Did I, did I come in under time? Yep. Great. You nailed it. I talked fast <laughs> this time. But uh, yeah, I don't know if we want to get into showing any of those tools if we have yeah, that. So, with, so I think this was, as I said, now that we, so this is the end of part one. So part yeah. one, as we talked about, is really the um, before you begin, before you put fingers to keyboard. So um, I'd like to open up this time for, for people any questions about, you know, any of you who've worked on sites from scratch, um, you know, any other tips or, or you know, things that you have uh, that you'd like to share, any questions about things we've talked about so far. So we're, we're, not, we're not diving into the building of the site yet, but this is, this is the kind of stuff, like I said, I, I think this is a hard learned lesson of, <laughs> You know, in some page builders and other things, just make it too easy for you just to dive into to, to coding. But it's like yeah. stepping back and thinking about this. It's a lot easier to to set this up in the beginning because that that's part of it too. We'll we'll show you. I mean, this was theory. A lot of this was the theoretical part of it. But I think as we're building out the site, you're going to see theory in action. So like you know, again, with fonts, for example, when we're building the site out, we're going to pick our two main fonts and we're going to show you how to set it up in the theme and, and build things out. So. I'll shut up for a couple of minutes. Any comments or questions from folks so far on the? Just a comment uh, regarding stock. Although it's not the free version for Adobe, um, it's a licensed version. I've been lucky to find some buildings that I was looking for for uh, where I work, um, finding it on Adobe stock. You know, the, there's a big selection, yeah. I found. Yeah, there's some there's some quality sites. One of the sites that I use for that's a paid site is called Deposit Photos, and it's a good stock photography site, and they offer a lot of free. But what I also have been and and I'm not pushing AppSumo on a lot of people because these you know anyone who knows about AppSumo and lifetime deals and you know, but one of the things that they occasionally do is they have deposit photo credits for a very small amount of money. You can buy like a hundred credits for. 
30 40 dollars or something like that and then you've got those so even even paid doesn't have to have to doesn't have to be super expensive um i agree with you on uh deposit photos photography makes a site but boy it can land you in court yes. if you download pictures from sites like unsplash which has just been bought by getty images right and any of the other sites we code our pictures with initials so we know where it came from. And we also then keep like a whole list of them. So be careful with photos. It's, um, it makes the site, but be careful. And actually a little tip we did is we use either pods or ACF. Every time you upload an image, we make a field that you only see in the media library and it's where you got that picture from. What's the link to where great. you got that picture? That's that's great. Yeah, and um, one there's a couple of Google and I, I'm now is it Tin Eye, where you do a reverse image search, is is another way of just kind of getting an idea of where's an image being used. How you know? That, so there's a lot of things that. With stock photography, um, you know, doing some research will help you. And yeah, if you if you just go and pull something off another site, especially if it is a commercial Getty image, they will find you and they will send you a bill because it's happened to somebody. Just, I just, just to clarify, though, maybe I misunderstood the comment. Like Unsplash, for example, those are royalty-free images, but there's some some of them they do require attribution for the image. So depending what kind of image you're using, but I mean the ones I think that Peter had listed are the ones that are. Are, yeah, the, but I, I, I think I think um, what you might be saying is that there, there have been a few cases where I, where licensed photography landed on Unsplash. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, oh, OK. That's good to know. Even so, if I was to have um, licensed an Adobe stock photo and upload it on a website, it may not necessarily just because we licensed it be OK. If well, with Adobe. And if you if you if you paid for the photo through yep. Adobe, you're you're going to be fine. You're, that's okay. you're gonna, yeah, you're going to be yeah. fine. It's that's when you pull it from a free site yeah. that may or may not have, you know. Okay. Didn't uh, WordPress just buy the Creative Commons search? Yes, they did, and they're look they're looking to roll it in. In fact, there's there's some tools that we've demonstrated before um, that link to things like Unsplash and Pexels and all. And I think that's one of the goals with, um, with the Creative Commons licensing where, you know, whether it's through a plugin or eventually to core, where if you want to just search for an image while you're in the editing environment, that's kind of one of the things that they're looking for. Right now, I, you know, you can do it with an Unsplash plugin where if you're like, if you're doing your blog post and you want to find a nice picture of a Shiba Inu dog, you know, um, you can do it right within your blog post because you have the plugin. I think the licensing of um, of the Creative Commons library is ultimately for that goal. Hey, Peter, we had a question in the chat um, about fonts. They said, does, does a person's computer or phone, et cetera, change your particular font? It can. Yeah, it, it, it can. So for, um, downloadable fonts like a Google font, it will pull the font file locally. Unless of course, ultimately the browser or the device is the ultimate control. In other words, somebody could say, no matter what, only use the font that, I, that I'm telling you to use. So, you know, th there, you, you, you rarely never have absolute control. Um, you just have, you know, most control over the types of fonts that get downloaded through the process of like a Google font, that type of thing. But there's certainly a lot of times where you have, um, when you load a font, a lot of times you'll see that there, there will be um, like, I don't know how to describe, like a cascade of the Default. primary font, a secondary font, and even like, so it's, uh, um, I can't remember, but it's Helvetica, Arial, sans serif so it'll kind of cascade down so if in, if in fact you know you're used to doing something on using helvetica on a mac but you're not connecting to the file to download it if they have it it'll show it if they don't it'll it'll Ball demote to Arial. so Great. i don't know if that answers the question but yeah, I think that was. 
Um, Are you going to go over Google rankings or anything um, since we're building it, like with the keywords and so forth? Well, well, I think we'll cover, we'll talk a bit about SEO as we're building the site. I think what we'll cover, though, is going to be more on-page SEO. So, yes, as we're building the site, I think we'll, we'll talk about things like the page titles, page descriptions, and where that's important. What we're not going to cover here, because that's a whole set of topics in itself, is off-page SEO. You know, off-page SEO, like doing keyword analysis, um, yeah. you know, link building, backlink building, all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll cover some SEO, again, things, and I, I like to cover the, the stuff basically that the things you can control, the things you can't control, like reviews and all that other stuff, we're not going to cover that part. Any other quick questions on part one before we, we dive into the, let's, let's start building stuff. I got a question on preferences for age groups. Sure. Uh, phone, iPad, or uh, monitor, if you have any info on that. You said build a website according to your audience. So if I were doing motorcycles, it'd be young. Maybe, maybe not. If you're building, if you're building a website for high-end motorcycles, it may be older people. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, the Harleys, but the uh, Hyundai, uh, the, the other ones are young. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but but it's a it's a good point because um, I I think it's for, for my experience. First of all, one of the things that you do is you always kind of start with mobile first because that's what Google is doing, and if, if search engine optimization is important to you. Um, and then what what you do is you look at your statistics over time and see where most of your uh, audience is coming from. But you can pretty much. If you're being smart with how you develop for the phone, you're, you're going to be you're going to be covered well. Um, I do have uh, clients that have, um, you know, their clients are primarily going into a office or a you know a, a machine shop kind of thing, and they're and they're using a PC. So your percentages when you see who's using mobile versus desktop might be different than you know another type of website where most everybody is using you know a phone to access it, but. Yeah, I mean, the best thing is is start with mobile and then pay attention to the stats that come in over time. I would also say just from our project standpoint, we're definitely going to, um, just like any website that you build these days, we'll be considerate of responsive design. So responsive design, in theory, you know, depending, it really shouldn't matter what kind of device you're viewing that. Again, we're not going to probably have enough time to test every single device because that is its own you know, it, its own kind of cost and resource to doing that. I would say, like, as we're going through this project, we'll, we'll certainly look at pages in the site that we're building and say, how does this look in mobile? How does it look in desktop? So I think that alone is a great topic just to talk about how do you tweak things and is it as hard as, you know, it used to be in the past. Thanks. Yep. All right. So for the sake of time, let me, let me um, jump into, let me pick things up again. I will... Looks like I'm putting yourself back in mute again, and I will share my screen. How about that? Uh, let's see. Let me share it in the desktop. And I'll do full screen again. All right. Oops. There we go. All right. So we're going to talk about. Um, I just have a couple slides here just to get get us started. But uh, setting up a local WordPress environment. And so what does that mean? And, and specifically, why? Why would I want to do this? Um, you know, one of the things that was always a challenge about websites in general is, you know, how do I get started? How do I build something? If, if I don't want to spend the money yet on hosting, how do I just play around? How do I tinker? So the good thing about building locally is you can build on your computer. You don't need to pay for hosting yet. You can try things out. Um, even if you do have hosting, you don't want to, you probably don't want to start building on your, your production live hosting and break things. So you won't impact any uh, live websites. Um, and for people who have slow internet connections, you know, building locally, you don't have to worry about, you know, bandwidth or things dropping off, et cetera. Uh, and it gives you a chance to do things like what we're doing here in, in these sessions, just test things out, you know, learn in sandbox, learn, learn in a, a safe environment. So that, that's a key of, of building locally. And in the past, it used to be a little bit more of a pain to do. You know, there were all because WordPress itself is built on a technology stack. Um, there, there were 
of installs like MAMP or WAMP, <laughs> which, which were all of those different pieces, but it was a little bit of a pain to set up. But luckily now, over the past couple of years, there, there have been some tools that have made it much, much simpler to set up a local environment. So the one, the one we're gonna be using here is this tool called um, Local WP or Local by Flywheel. So Flywheel is the hosting company that has been generous enough to basically share this tool with everybody, share it with the WordPress community. Uh, it's free, so you, you don't need to be using Flywheel hosting. In fact, I, I'm not on Flywheel hosting, but, um, but again, you, you can build any kind of website, WordPress website with it. The, the nice thing is that it's very easy to install, to set up, updated frequently, even for free users. They, they give some great features um, for free, and it has cross-platform support. So I'm using a Mac, Peter's using a, a Windows PC, um, but the, the Flywheel product pretty much works the same for both. So again, we'll send out this link to everyone, but if you just go to localwp.com or search for local by flywheel, you can, you have to register, I believe you just, you know, give your email, just like everything these days, give you your email and name, but then they'll give you a direct link. Um, and then you can download it on your computer. Uh, let me just show real quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on, on their site, but just some features of it that we'll look at some of these um, really, you know, the one click install, we'll take a look at. It has some advanced stuff built into in the back end that I won't go into too much today. I think we'll we'll look at these things again. As we said, we'll iterate as we run into problems where, where we may need to look at something. Um, there are a lot of advanced features in it that that you can take advantage of. And there's some cool new things. Like I didn't even know this. I might, probably since the last time I updated, but like new things like one click uh, admin. That's really neat. So again, if you're testing locally. Um, you can just click on a site and you don't have to log in with the, the admin uh, address. It kind of caches it for you. There are tons of features, great tool. I'm not going to show the part of installing it. Uh, I already have it installed on my computer. I didn't want to uninstall it and reinstall it, but I went through it on another, I have another drive on here and pretty straightforward. I, I don't think it's really worth spending time showing the, that install part of it. Um, but let's, let's get started. So here we go. We're going to, we're going to roll up our sleeves and if you have, once you've installed local, this is what you get. I mean, you won't have these. These are the sites I've already played around with. But um, so the button you want to start with is the plus button. So add add a local site. So here, here's our first decision. Peter, we didn't talk about this, but I'm, <laughs> what are we going to call this thing? I said WP Animal, <laughs> animal Shelter, something like that. Sure, we, we, can, sure. <laughs> we can change the name later. Right. So, so if you're following along, I mean, you don't have to follow along verbatim to what we're doing. And hopefully, you know, you can call it whatever you like if you're more clever than us. But the first thing it's doing is it's saying, all right, what's your site? What's your site's name? Um, this is kind of, you can change it later, but it's kind of important. Um, think, of a, think of a good name first, because it's going to set up some things on your computer that really are connected to this name. So um, again, if you want to, you know, just follow us, WP Animal Shelter. In the, in the advanced options, um, again, you don't need to look at all of these, but one thing that later on, a, a nice feature of this tool is that once you created a site, you can save that as a blueprint that later, when, if you want to play around and, and create other versions, you can just use the blueprint again. And all of your installation, including plugins, everything you've installed in that WordPress instance, you just, you're basically using a cookie cutter. You're cloning it into other, other sites. So for me, like I use Divi with the page builder. And, you know, I've, I have plugins that I normally use all the time. I have a blueprint that I, I typically use and then just and, and build from that. So in our case, we're just going to start with the, the plain vanilla WP Animal Shelter. Continue. Here's the next important step. So besides the, the great name we came up with, <laughs> what environment? So even though we're running this locally, you still want to be you want to give some thought to where is the site eventually going to be deployed. Now, again, if you're just working locally along with, with us and you're never going to deploy this animal shelter anywhere, probably something you don't need to worry about so much. Um, but if you're building a site and you do want to eventually deploy it to, let's say, um, you know, Flywheel or SiteGround or GoDaddy or whatever, you, you probably want to think about matching your environment to your server's environment. So that's, that's not something we will get into a lot of time here, but just, you know, consider that because one thing that could happen is if there's a mismatch between them, if you build something here and you just immediately try deploying it, you may get a failure later because your environments aren't matching. 
Um, but just for, again, for people who don't go into the technical side of this, you know, WordPress itself has some recommendations around versions. So WordPress, if you think about the technology stack, it's running on PHP, which is kind of your, your scripting thing. And WordPress itself today, I think recommends, is it seven point, let me see, I excited to download. I think WordPress recommends at least 7.4, anywhere like in the sevens. <laughs> so any of the yeah. fives are the old version. So I'm going to stick with kind of just the, the, um, the preferred on this. So actually, no, I'm going to go custom. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to go WordPress. Um, and Peter and I don't have to do this necessarily the same. I'm going to go WordPress 7.4.1. Yeah. And servers, here's another one too. So the server type, this is a hosting thing, uh, but just to be aware of, there are the two most common web server um, uh, platforms are Ingenix and Apache. So Apache is an older one. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, Ingenix is a newer one that is faster in some instances. Uh, I'm not sure how many hosts actually use Nginx, probably less than uh, ones that use Apache. So this won't make a huge difference from a performance standpoint, and we probably won't get into these details too much later, but I'm, I'm gonna stick with Apache for now because it's probably more common. Mm -hmm. and, and then your database, uh, I'm gonna stick with MySQL 8.0. So if you're following along from home, if you wanna be exactly doing what we're doing, I would select 7.4.1, Apache, whatever the latest one is here, and then MySQL 8.0 dot whatever. So if you're watching this in the future, those of you in the future, <laughs> just get seven something Apache and then right. MySQL 8. Right. Yeah. Welcome to the future. All right, so then continue. So at that point, that was not WordPress related. That was just kind of saying on my computer, you know, what environment do I want to set up? Now here comes the first WordPress thing. So what username, admin username do I want to start with? Uh, um, just for the sake of, of this, don't call yourself me or Mitch No, call yourself whatever you want. And then pick a, pick a secure password, not like the one I'm doing, and then put in an email address in here. So this will be your actual admin uh, user that it's gonna use to install WordPress. And then let me just take a quick look here. Multi-site, we're not gonna do multi-site. That's just a whole separate kind of project. And then here's, here comes the magic. Add the site and, and now you wait. And what this is doing, just like if you provisioned a site on a host, this is creating a WordPress site that's just there, just on my computer. Um, the first thing, I'm not sure what this looks like on Windows, but on a Mac, you do have to, because it's an admin thing, it's, it's putting some settings into my, my Mac. Um, I have to give it at like sign in as an admin to allow it to do that. Basically what it's doing, it's routing things. So. So when I open this up in a browser, I'm going to put in wpanimalshelter.local in my computer will know that this is something running on my computer, not off in the internet anywhere, it, but it's going to act as if it's a normal website. So that's, that's kind of the neat thing about this. It looks and behaves just like a regular live public website, but it's not. No one else can see it. There are ways that you can make people see it, but we won't get into that. That's, that's a, an advanced topic. So the, the very next step I like to do when I'm doing a, a, a fresh install is I immediately want to um, make sure I have an SSL certificate enabled down here. So for folks who remember, or if you're just a beginner, you know, if you go to websites, uh, public websites, and if you type in HTTP or HTTPS, uh, HTTPS is a secured HTTP protocol. So when you go to sites, you'll, you'll see a lock you know, generally you'll, you'll see like a little like a lock icon on your browser. That is an SSL certificate. So normally your host, your, your website host will install one of those for you. Well, because we're running locally, we have to kind of do that ourselves. So the very first thing I'll do is I want to trust, I'm basically telling my computer to trust the SSL certificate from, um, from local. So I hit trust, something should come up and it's saying, yes, I'm, I put in my admin password for my computer. And again, for people following along Windows, I, maybe we'll, we'll do that as a follow-up afterwards. I don't know if the process is, is that different from it. I'm assuming that you're still gonna have to give Windows permissions for, for allowing me to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So here we go. At this point, I've got, a, I've got a site. I've got a WordPress site called WP Animal Shelter. How do I get to it? There's two ways I can view this site. I can click on admin, that'll log me in as an admin, or I can just open the site. So let, let's start by opening the site to begin with. You click on this button and what happens? Uh, I have to move my window because the Zoom thing is blocking me. It launched the site. 
you know, so, and this says not secure, we're gonna fix this in a second. So right now by default, because when it first installed WordPress, I still need to make one more change to actually make the certificate work. But right now, um, for all intents and purposes, you know, I have a live WordPress site on my computer called wpanimalshelter.local. None of you can see it if you, if you type that in because it's just on my computer. Um, but let's, let's fix this problem. This is one of the first things I like, I like to fix. So if I go back to, if I go back to local and I'm gonna sign in as the admin this time. So again, the username and address, uh, I'm sorry, username and password that I set up when I install this, I'm gonna put mine in So make sure you put in yours. I'm lazy, so I like to be remember, remember me. And hopefully you won't get that because I use the same stupid password for junky things like this. So here we go. So I have a live WordPress site. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna fix this not secure. So the reason I'm getting that is if I go to my settings general, when, when local first installed this version, it just, it put in HTTP. So at this point, cause I don't have anything else in here. I can just simply change that to S and then save this. And now it's gonna make, it's gonna log me out and it's gonna log me back in and my same password. Again, remember me, I don't even know if I need to do that again. But now when I log in, if you see, I've got the I've got the lock. So now I actually have my computer thinks it's secure. It's a secured SSL connection to um, uh, to this website. All right. So let me just show you a couple more quick things on local. So this is this is just getting a local environment set up on your computer. So now that you have um, this this uh, website running on your computer, some other quick things you want to be aware of in local. One is you don't necessarily need to do this, but I always find it's a good practice to, when you're done like doing our lessons or done playing around, stop your site, shut it down. You just free resources from your computer. That, that's the big thing. So stopping a site is as simple as either hover your mouse over it, hit the red, um, the red square here, or stop all your sites. So um, Or up here too, it gives you three ways to do it. So let's say I'm gonna stop my site this way. So when I stop it, what does that mean? It runs through, it clears up memory, but if you, you look and say, wait a minute, Ray, it still looks like you have your site running. Well, if I try now to refresh this, my computer says, what are you talking about? There, there is no site. So that, that's what stopping is doing. Stopping is basically um, you know, turning it off. And if I wanna restart a site, so next time when you come in here and you launch local, and you, wanna, you wanna get working, make sure you first start the site. So starting it, again, very simple, you know, click the green arrow, It'll run for a second. Oops. It does a little spinny thing. If all goes well, it starts the site. And now if I go back again, wherever, uh, or actually, no, let me not go that way. It, that's about 15 minutes. If I go back again to admin, there it is. It started up again. That's local. It's, it's very simple. And again, really simple in terms of stopping and starting. We won't touch any of these other things at this point. But this is the first step towards following along with, with our presentation. Install local, um, you know, write whatever, create whatever name you want. If you want to be consistent with us, WP Animal Shelter, follow those settings. And again, we're going to send a recording of this to people afterwards. So I'd like people to do that before we meet again. All right. So now, now you've got a site. Now here, here comes the hard part. And now, now this comes to Peter instead. What do, you, what do I do? I've got, I've got the site. Now what do I do with it? Yeah. Uh, so let me stop sharing. All yours, Peter. Okay. All right. Are we are we good? We're good. Good. Well, you know, it's funny you say the hard part. Um, what what we're gonna go over at least in this call is pretty not hard, um, which which is which is good. You know, I I think you know in terms of uh you know the steps that you go through with, with installing the the local server which as you mentioned before used to be really hard and now has been made very very easy with local it's still it's it's not so easy because there there are steps that you have to get right um but once you're in the environment and and, and by the way you know i imagine we have a few people who might have hosting where they can have, you know, a, a, an extra, they already have website hosting and they could set up a, um, an extra site and all. So this, what, where local is really good is, you know, 
you, you don't have to have any hosting at all. Um, but if, uh, if you do have hosting and you prefer, and the reason I'm saying it is because what I'm gonna show you is actually now not local, it's hosted externally. And I think what we can do over time is that'll be what, something that we can build so people can actually see the process. Um, because we can't get to your uh, computer, Ray, right? So, exactly. um, so we're talking about now, one of the next things to do is um, uh, theme selection. And it's not because we're looking for the, the final design of the website. We haven't approached that yet. We, we've talked about all the inspiration. We've talked about you know, how you might decide on colors and fonts and things like that as you're kind of building your little scrapbook, uh, your mood board, if you will. And there's even mood board tools that we could talk about. Um, but you know, the things that you want to pull together, um, ultimately the way WordPress works is that um, a theme um, is going to help you tie all that stuff together. Historically, um, themes have been, you know, what years ago when people were looking for a theme, they were looking for something that says, oh, the site looks like the thing that I'm seeing and I want my site to look for like that. So let me get that theme and then I can make it, make it happen. It, there's been an evolution with a, with a lot, with a, uh, a lot of the ways uh, themes works. Now, you could always have themes that have a lot of flexibility. It's what's built into WordPress from the beginning, but we're looking at a kind of a situation that's gonna allow us to really kind of build um, from a design that isn't absolutely predefined by the theme, but allow, the theme allows us to add the elements and the colors and the fonts and things like that in such a way that makes a lot of sense. So how did we pick a theme? What are the considerations? Well. Um, First thing, just like we mentioned at the beginning is, you know, a theme that's free and available in the WordPress repository. So um, the WordPress repository, uh, for those, anyone who hasn't gone there yet is wordpress.org slash themes, or once you load, and this is how we'll do it, once you um, are working within the WordPress environment, as Ray just showed, you when you go to install a theme, it's going to go to the repository. The repository, is where you can download a theme uh, for free and that has been vetted and had, had, had some level of approval through the wordpress.org organization. Um, so it needs to meet certain criteria. There are tens of thousands of themes. Um, many of them, many, many of them I would not recommend. Um, and you know what we chose to do is we chose to, to go with what, what we're calling a blank page. I'm not even sure if it has an official name, Ray, but the flexible blank page theme versus a predefined design layout. You know, something that is, when you first see it, it's pretty stark. It doesn't force you to do anything to make your homepage look a certain way. It kind of just gives you the freedom of that, that open palette, if you will. Um, we want to make sure it's block editor friendly um, because we're going to use the block editor. Um, we want a strong customizer component, even though the customizer is going to evolve over time, but having something gives you a lot of control within, and I'll show you the customizer, um, where you can do a lot with the theme. Um, having a well-supported, strong community is really important it, to me. When, when I see people who are, you know, they say, hey, I've got the theme and I need help and nobody can help them because they're kind of, you know, out there all by themselves. Whereas when, when you're using a theme that is, got a, a, a large user base that is actively, and that's very important, actively being uh, updated. Um, you can find the tutorials, you can find the user group. If you're a Facebook person and you want to, you know, maybe your theme has a specific user group where you can ask questions. That's really, really helpful. Um, you may get to a point where there's certain things that you want to do that would be in a premium, um, a, a premium level theme. So maybe having a theme that has a lot of power um, out of the gate, um, but that, um, you know, you can even upgrade to a higher level. Um, and then some of these, you know, we're talking about, you know, might include starter templates and block patterns. These are things where a lot of the design is kind of pre-done for you and you can just kind of glue the things together, including even just opening a site. We're not going to use a starter template um, because we're going to go through the process of showing you how to build something, but it is, it is something to consider. Um, the themes that, that I like, um, my recommended themes, and there, there's when you get into the page builder themes and things like that, it, that might change. Although all of these support page uh, builders if you decide to go that way. Um, but is the Cadence theme, Generate Press, Astra, Bloxy, Ocean WP, 
and the page builder framework. These are all, they're, they're efficient. They are, um, they are built for, they are responsive. They're built for uh, a very efficient delivery of sites, some of them more than others. And there's been measurement on, on you know, which ones really, really excel, um, you know, having accessibility, although an accessibility ready tag is something different that not all of these have because they're, these are going at least initially for the commercial audience, but we're going to go with Cadence. Uh, Cadence is a relatively new um, theme that that was released, I think within the last year. Um, it was supported by some well-known people within the WordPress community. Um, it offered a lot, kind of got a lot of attention. And now it has since been just recently they were acquired by the iThemes organization, which has really pulled in liquid web iThemes and some other, they pulled in a lot of these things. So it's definitely going to be supported, but they have a strong uh, uh, free theme. So let me, let's, let's, let's show this. Um, I'm going to escape out of here and let me bring over, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. So this is similar to what Ray just loaded um, because what we have here is um, the default theme uh, in a new install of WordPress is the 2021 theme. Um, if you are using a host that you load, they might, some hosts actually load a bunch of pre-installed themes, which I don't, I don't necessarily think is best practice, but um, right out of the gate, you should be starting with the 2021 theme. Um, we have at this point, no plugins loaded. So plugins are, for anyone new to WordPress, are, are, are pieces of code that you can download that add functionality to your, um, to your website, either on the front end, back end, or both. Um, and you can use plugins to, to you know, add all kinds of features to your site or design features, things like that. We're starting uh, uh, pretty clean um, from the settings similar to, in fact, it's funny, uh, Ray, I did something that you should never do, which is I changed something while you were talking on the host here to match the PHP version. So um, in, in terms of, if you go to tools and our site health, you know, we, we're gonna be in a pretty, yeah. <laughs> Pretty straightforward thing. Yep. Do I hear somebody ask a question? I was laughing. I said, look at that. We have we have no plugins. Yep. We, we've passed. Let's stop right there. We're <laughs> Great job. Yes. <laughs> there are no problems. You've loaded nothing. We love your site. <laughs> A plus and pay them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I tell you what, if if I did, and I, sh I should kind of off the side, go do a, a speed test on it. It's going to load very fast uh because because there's because there's literally uh nothing to it but you know this for anyone who's um this is a great tool when you go into tools site health and then you can look at the status and the info where you can really see everything how your site is this is important especially if you have to debug something or find if you're getting issues with uh some problem or outdated plugins and all you'll you'll find a lot of information here but if we go under appearance themes where we are and we can add new. Now, the way WordPress works, again, for people, there's a lot of times, there's multiple places that you can often do things like add something new, but under themes, appearance, right now we only have the 2021, we're gonna add new. And again, by, by default, you, you may have a, a theme that you have downloaded locally or that you've purchased and all, you can upload a theme. Um, you can have it locally and then upload it to, to, to your site. Um, but in this case, what we're seeing here in this window are uh, themes that are available on uh, the WordPress repository. Um, and I don't see, sometimes they, th there's a whole thing behind, you know, what gets shown to you first, but if we put in uh, cadence, there's our, our cadence theme. Um, and you can see that the Cadence theme is, is quite popular. Um, you know, it's got a five-star rating. Um, you can look at kind of the details to it, but we're gonna simply click install um, because we have experience with it. We, we know what it is. And the thing about themes is you can load it and try it. And if you don't like it, you can install another theme. The beauty about WordPress is you are separating your content from the output of the content, which is managed. So you, you have your, 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 your program of, you know, the, the platform of WordPress, 
you have your content, which is all stored in a database, all this, all the word, uh, the the posts and the pages that you will create and that we will create in future meetings. And then you have the theme that kind of controls, you know, how that's shown, the colors, the styles, even style sheets that you put on that to have even greater granular control. Um, so you can you can try out different themes, but we're going to not only install this, but we're going to activate it. And once we do that, and now I'm back to my appearance themes. My default uh, 2021 theme is now not active. That's why the activate uh, button is here. And now my new uh, newly installed from the repository cadence theme is it's active. If I if I click on the theme, it's telling me that it's the current theme. There's some some information all on it, and I've got some links here that are also kind of my links over here under appearance themes, customized widgets. So one of the things that we're looking at that you, we're going to spend some time here, and right now that theme is installed and it is active. Um, if I were to look at the front end of this website, and right now it's just called. I just changed the name to WP Animal Shelter, Ray, when you <laughs> when you invented that. Uh, on the front end, it's still just uh, build.hartfordwp.com. Uh, this is just a domain that I have, and I'm putting this on a, on a live server. There's one post that comes as default, the Hello World post. Um, there's we have no logo. We're going to do this in future meetings, but it's you know that's the the name uh, of the site that comes default. But we can I can show you how to manage that. But a big area where we're going to be spending some time is the customizer. And what's nice about the cadence theme is that it's going to give us a lot of control within the customizer. So you know what are some of the things that we've already talked about? We've talked about uh, colors. So setting up our global once we decide what colors we want setting up our global palette we can do within the cadence uh theme and what's important to remember here too is different themes the customizer is different functionality is to the customizer is added and controlled by the themes so if you're using a different theme which you certainly can but in terms of the follow along for this and building for using Cadence, you'll be able to follow along. But even if you use uh, Astra or Generate Press, um, you their their customizer works differently. So it's important. Just keep that in mind because you might go, you might have a different theme loaded and go, I don't see that, and it's like no, because it's it's part of uh, that theme. But you'll see that in the customizer, we have a section for controlling. Uh, oops, I went too far out. We have a section for controlling um, color and um not all themes organize the customizer the same way and in fact to the point where there's actually a plugin call uh, that allows you to search your customizer if you're like where's typography well under cadence typography so we had colors and typography the other topic that we have is here too where we can um set the typography that we want right now the base font is is system fonts but in the in this particular theme you know, you're given, this is what I was talking about, kind of the go Arial Helvetica sans serif, you know, that's where it goes from, those are system fonts, Arial being a, a, a PC, primarily Helvetica, um, but Helvetica, Arial's also on, on Mac, Helvetica, Mac, and so on, down to the point where now you get into, as I'm just scrolling down to, um, to uh, Google fonts. Um, typically, your themes, if they're going to have any kind of you know, built into the customizer, a list of fonts, it's typically going to be uh, Google fonts. So say we like, um, uh, and once we pick pick it for sure, but say, um, you know, one font that I kind of like these days is called Poppins. Um, I could just search for it, I should have. Um, but if I pick up Poppins, it has now um, changed my body copy. This is the Poppins font here. And say I wanted to um, make my, my heading font um, not inherit, but pick another font, um, and and I will just pick something called, um, say, Montserrat. So Montserrat is a bolder font. Oh, I think I made yeah. If you need to click off 
and I'm trying to click on it and it's, it's I, be, I think it, it is changing. I think you just need to click off the. Uh, okay, the got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I picked two that kind of look similar to each other and I probably shouldn't have. But anyway, when we pick our fonts and we start looking at uh, testing fonts, um, you know, we, we might do that uh, here. And we'll get into some detail, but just to show you, this is where this kind of thing gets the, the, the colors, the fonts, the things that are going to be affecting um, our site layout, uh, site look. Um, and then um, one of the things that, that we'll be spending a lot of time in is when we get into um, things like the menus, you know, when we talk about navigation, we'll create a menu that'll show here, then we'll get into well, how does that menu look. That's all part of, and we'll, we'll talk about what's coming up next, but that's all going to be a level of detail. This is very, very high level just to show you that these are the types of things that are within your customizer of the theme. And the cadence theme that we're using for our example gives us a lot of, a lot of control right within the themes customizer itself. So, Ray, is there anything else you think we should cover? No, no, I think this thing? is, again, we, we both have, they, they seem so simple, but th these are the building blocks. This, this is right. a very starting thing of, yeah, and, and, uh, exactly. I think we'll get into the details of, of how to use all these different settings as, yep. as needed, again, as we said, as we start building it out. Exactly, exactly. So why don't we, I can, I can leave this up in case, um, I can leave my screen if we want to do in demos if people have questions or I'll not share the screen. You tell me what you would like. How about, uh, let me grab it back because I'll just yeah. I'll kind of wrap up and then we'll, we'll leave the rest of the time I think for um, for yeah. questions. So let, let me let me grab the um, share screen again one more time. Share. Okay. So and let me do full screen. So what do you what if you're following along and again if you're in the future and you're following along or you're watching this now now you've got a local environment of wordpress um and you have the cadence theme installed so where are we going next so and we'll send out links to everyone as well to you know where to find cadence where to get local um, but we'll also send out a link to that that site so if you remember the let me just escape out of this again for a second our our inspiration is Oh, it's closed. It. Our inspiration is, is that um, that that site on Dudo. Let me sorry. Give me one second to find it again. Our inspiration is is this. Um, so we're going to try to build something like this again. Not exactly. Obviously, the images. This makes no sense for an animal shelter. But we're gonna we're gonna use these different pieces to start building out a homepage. So in our next session, um, you're gonna start to see this this site come together. So we're going to start filling in um, the basics. So we're going to start building out the header, the footer, um, some navigation, even though we won't really have a lot to navigate to, and then the home page. Uh, and that's going to take an entire an entire session because we're we're going to spend a lot of time about you know how do you build those different sections. Um, we'll show you how to do things in Cadence to make your life a bit easier, but also. Yeah, and show you maybe the how do you how would you build it native in the block editor and then how do you how do you tweak designs and things so um again that our my message to folks is to get the most out of these sessions you can follow you can just listen to us but follow along you know i think today's today's uh things seem fairly simple but we want it to be simple for you to to at least be ready and be prepared so your homework is going to be to install local on your, on your machine, or again, if you already have access to hosting, um, feel free to create a spin up a, um, you know, staging site or a demo site. But for most people, you know, go ahead and install local and then install the cadence theme. And that's it. And then if you want extra credit, <laughs> go play around a little bit with cadence and, and tweak things and all that, you know, but again, you can always blow it away and restart it. So right. um, I, that's where I want to leave things at least for for now. So We'll, we'll hang around here a bit too for questions and all that. But again, that our hope is that before we meet next time, I'll send out reminders to folks too, is start you know laying that foundation because after this, we're gonna start building. So you, you need to follow the, the first steps. So let me stop, stop the slide. So any, any questions so far from folks? So fo everyone feels confident, everyone's gonna follow along. You're all gonna you're all going to set up your 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 test environments I like that, Robert. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs>
does anyone have any any fears or doubts at this point about that you you can follow along i mean again i, I think it's there's there's not a lot to again having a computer having an internet i mean you're all here on zoom i think that's yeah. that's really the prerequisites of this um I, things are going to get interesting after this but we'll make sure that the pacing of this is is good too so believe it or not i, I and again peter and i are going to talk about this afterwards as we divide things up we will probably spend the entire next session just working on that home page and the, those navigation pieces and we probably won't finish the home page yeah. um, so we'll have plenty of time to dive into um how we build that out yeah so Fox, Ray, uh, a quick yep, question uh, sure um hey, Reece. hey. <laughs> you know, I, saw, I watched Peter do it on um, a regular hosting site uh, yep. for local. I'm assuming it's a similar interface and process for bringing cadence in as your as your thing. Is that yes, correct? Because everything that he showed is is exactly. inside of WordPress. So every, okay. yeah, we're we're gonna have a complete like for like match inside of WordPress. Where, where things would differ, and we're probably not gonna do this, but where things would differ is like when Peter showed that site info, it was showing that his files were on his his host, on his host right. server. My computer okay. though, because I'm doing local, I, I'm on a Mac, so mine would show my local file directories. If you're on Windows, I think local puts your stuff under like, I don't know if it's C program files or C documents or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's not under documents, it's, it's buried a little bit, yeah. So, but so you can see this. That's really the only difference between what he's doing and what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, well, okay. WordPress itself is exactly the same, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Although one one good point to not miss here is, if you were to not to open a can of worms, but if you were to try to do this on WordPress.com, oh, yeah. that's a whole different world. <laughs> Don't. So, Don't. Yeah. So just FYI. Yeah. This is what the dot org environment is self hosted, um, which is why you would either need, you know, you need a hoster if you want to test or play around. And you can completely educate yourself purely on your own PC because of things like uh, local. Like Rhonda's comment is fearing the block. Don't fear the block editor. We're, we're all going to be in this together. We're all going to yep. break our fear of the block editor. Is it? Yep. The page builder, I will say, you know, again, this, this will be a funny thing. You're going you're gonna to see the page builder guy like me struggle. At yeah. time. I've built a couple things with Cadence, but I'm I'm still a, you know in the new newbie realm yep. as far as Cadence and the tools change. I mean the theme itself has changed and improved, and so is so it's the block editor. So yeah, I know we've had a few few people convert over, um, and hopefully even more because once you once you once you get past, there's literally like a certain point in time where all of a sudden you go, oh wait a minute, this yeah. is not nearly as you know things are different, but. And, and yes, you can cut and paste out of Word <laughs> right into, you know, so there's a lot of things you could do. Um, some people are asking about the next meetup. We don't have it officially set up. I, I got to kind of look at our calendars. We typically do, this is a, this one was a little bit later. I, I was actually on vacation for the past week. Um, we, we typically do Mondays or Tuesdays. I think we've been sticking the Monday um, thing recently, typically around the second ish Monday, but yeah. we'll, we'll try to set it up. Uh, what I'll, I'll definitely make sure is that we'll announce it soon enough that if everyone's like I am and y'all wait to do your homework, you know, <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have plenty of time to, to catch up and, and make sure you're yeah. running. How quickly to get my presentations, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes five minutes before. Right, right. <laughs> Taking them for the last minute. All right. Are we going to get an, um, like, are you guys going to send a notification for us? Because I kind of stumbled on the meetup by accident, but I want to be sure to make your next meeting. So, yeah, so, so once, yeah, so once you've RSVP to one of the meetups, now any other ones that we set up, you'll, you'll be part of the announcement. You'll be part of the audience. So, yeah. Okay. Thank somebody, you. Somebody asked if we'll be grading. No, on the curve. No. <laughs> And we won't be beating anybody up and we're all very, very friendly as far as, you know, please ask questions. And in fact, we have time if you have questions that are not related to this, but are still WordPress. You know, we have people who've come here that might be running into stuff. So, um, you know, we welcome all questions. And are you gonna post the link for this session? 
Yeah, so what I, exactly. So now that you're subscribed, um, you, you've you joined one of the meetups, what we typically do is probably tomorrow sometime, I'll send out, um, uh, so we're gonna upload the recording to our YouTube channel. We put the, um, we put the presentation slides on our Facebook page, and then I'll send out a communication to everyone with with links to all of those. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. Probably, hopefully end of day tomorrow, if not early the next day. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And and go and real quick going forward too is um, I'd like to we we've got the Facebook group we answer questions there we post stuff there I also want to build out a, a heart for WP site so that because some people more people are becoming less fans of Facebook or won't yeah. go into Facebook in the first place so we, we're sensitive to that and also the site I mean that, that's a great point too so in and this is a you know I'm building local because I think again everyone should have access to that I think Peter's building it. Um, a public, public site yeah. the nice thing about him building a public site is that's another way that over time you can actually see it and you'll have something to compare it to as well so you can look at his you know phase two of this and say how did he do that and you know so we want to do both you know you you can play along like i am of just do it on your machine but you'll always have a reference there yeah i have a quick question sure. absolutely um my server guy gave me a copy of my site um yep. And I'm going to try to use that. And I want to abandon Elementor and go back to WordPress. So yeah. I just changed it to Cadence. Okay. Um, and I think I'm going to. Um, well, I'm just going to. I'm just going to have to undo as I go along. I guess you can follow. Yeah, I would say. So what we're going to build is really going to be from scratch. So existing sites. Um, I would say you can learn from what we're doing, but not everything we're doing will apply to an existing site. Because again, that's that's sort of the issue that unfortunately an existing site, you may have pages built a certain way or plugins that really need to be installed. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say follow along as much as you can, but certainly also try to, again, with local, spin up and start one from scratch. Because I think what you learn from the from, the from scratch site, you can apply to your existing site. Okay. I, I yeah. can do that too. Then. Yeah, Thanks. and 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 if if you feel comfortable either in Facebook or, or sharing with us the URL, we can even take a look and go. Here's where you, you're going to need to pay most attention to, because a lot of times people have Elementor mm -hmm. and don't need it at all for even what they have. So yeah. uh, I've seen that a lot. So I've used a lot of it, so I yeah. need to yeah. undo. And I and I want to change the theme a little bit. So. Okay, I'm patient. Very good. Thank you. Can I ask a question as well? Uh, when I'm searching for a theme, I think the first thing I notice is the uh, the quantity and the placement of images and, uh, and and making a choice based on that. Is that a useful way of selecting a theme or in that preview, there really is a lot of flexibility and I need to get past that. Yeah, that's a, a, <laughs> what, what's that, right? I, I said the latter. Yeah, because yeah. part of the problem too with a lot of these themes, especially um, <laughs> Some of the commercial ones is they look great when you see them on the themes website, but when you install it, you're suddenly with this blank slate. Yeah. Like mine looks nothing like this this thing. And so part of that is when when we're building the site, um, we're going to show you again where you get where you can find the images and, and basically how to build something from scratch. I think the um, but hopefully again by looking at a template and we're building from something for inspiration. I think you should feel more comfortable in the end that, yeah, I can build something from scratch that matches maybe what this theme is showing on their showcase pages. So their, their showcase pages, they spent a lot of time putting images yeah. and, and, and things on that, so. Yeah, and a lot a lot of time and effort goes into from from the, the, the user who says, oh, I want that theme, and then they wanna change it. Now they're in a kind of theme that it's becomes so much harder to make the changes that you wanna make. So what might seem the build from scratch seems like, oh, that's the thing that takes a long time. Ultimately, I think it's completely the other way around. I, you know, to reverse engineer the way certain themes, and it's not all themes, but certain themes work to make it work the way you want to can take far more time just to, versus saying, okay, I've got this and now this is where I wanna put my hero section and here's where I put my you know, top services and all and how to build that out link that all together so much to me easier than working with a, a predefined theme. That well, had even good. Cadence, I mean, I think yep. Peter, Peter and I haven't really talked about this much, but Cadence and a lot of themes are kind of, even WordPress, I guess, is doing this a little bit too, where 
maybe there's sections that you can pull in. So there are little template sections yep. that, again, the hero thing is something a lot of people have on their site. Right. So we'll, as we're building out the site, I think we'll try to show it both ways. I think we'll yep. try to show where possible building a hero section with a button and all this kind of doing it from scratch. And then we'll show you, you know, Cadence may happen to have one of those sections you yeah. can slap onto any page. Um, yeah. So I think that's a worthwhile thing to see because sometimes it, it's good to know there's no magic behind these sections. You can right. build it yourself if you need right. to. Exactly. Uh, we got a couple of minutes left and we've had quite a few people drop off already. Any any final thoughts from people? Um, Could I ask, is, um, is this theme Woof commerce friendly? Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because I have, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're yeah. They, they even have, go ahead. No, we're probably not going to, for this um, this site, well, maybe that's an advanced topic later, if we ever decide to do yeah. WooCommerce and our animal shelter. Um, but yeah, no, it definitely is WooCommerce. Yeah, dog t-shirts and all. But yeah, no, it's, in, in fact, to the point where there's also, and we'll, we'll, when we get into the plugins and picking, you know, uh, single function, but there are like cadence specific um, uh, plugins and all, there's even a WooCommerce cadence plugin for greater control over the way your uh, shop pages work, but absolutely. We're gonna need donations for our, for our shelter. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll have that. Which interestingly enough, GiveWP, which is a great donation yeah. plugin, was also acquired by the same company that acquired Cadence, I believe. Oh. I, I, I th oh no, look, I'm getting them mixed up because there's like two companies that are acquiring a bunch of organizations. But. And they're acquiring things not too bad too. So the, no, it's the not. Cadence, Cadence being acquired by iThemes, I, I know in the community, at least some of the, the forums I read, some people were a little bit, um, not really upset because I, I think I think has a pretty good track record, but great track me, record. That, that's actually a sign of confidence. You know, it's a sign yeah. of confidence that um, people are saying, hey, this theme is has a growing audience. It, it's worth investing in. And you want to see that. I mean, that's one thing that, you know, again, it's scary about some of these themes that are out in theme forest and you don't know who built yeah. it, how many people are there, is any support there. So I think Cadence, even though we're picking it specifically to showcase the block editor, um, it's a decent theme for people who, again, we're not getting paid by Cadence. I think it's, it's a good theme that showcases uh, where the block editor is going and it's a powerful enough theme that, well, it seems like it's gonna be around for, for quite a while. Yep. All right, well, let's maybe wrap it up there. I think we're hitting the end of the hour. So thank you all for joining us, especially everyone, a lot of new faces here. Thanks for our regulars for returning as always. And we'll send out, as I said, within the next 48 hours, we'll send out information about the, the slides, everything being uploaded to YouTube. Uh, and prior to our next meetup, I will nag everyone to do your homework so that we'll we'll hit the ground running. It's like yeah. back from summer vacation, you hit the ground <laughs> running. <laughs> Great. All right, well, take care everyone. Have a good night. Thank uh, we'll you. see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.